Cellular respiration is a very good example of a catabolic pathway. And what we mean by a catabolic pathway is that this is a pathway that is going to break down molecules. And when it breaks down molecules, the main point of that, or the reason that we'll be doing that, is that we're going to release energy. And that energy that is released would be energy that we could use for other reactions inside the cell that would actually require energy. So overall, this process will be exergonic. And another way to say that would be that the delta G is going to be negative when we look at that. So here we have the overall equation for cellular respiration. This is very much a summary equation because inside of this, there are about 30 individual little steps. So here we just have it summarized. We can see over on this side that our reactants, the necessary materials really are going to be um, this carbohydrate, which is glucose. That is typically the carbohydrate that we start with when we're talking about cellular respiration or it is the food source that we talk about. But really, um, we could have here um, pretty much any organic molecule. And if you think about all of those molecules that you do use as a food source, those would be included here. So this could be proteins. It could be um, other carbohydrates like starch. We could also have something like a triglyceride. So there really are a number of options there, and I do want you to definitely be aware that we don't have to start specifically with glucose. Another very important reactant is this oxygen that we see here. So this is the real reason that we do have to breathe oxygen continuously to survive, because this is a required process for our cells. And so from those two reactants, what we're going to end up with at the end is we will release some carbon dioxide here as a waste product. So this will be just a waste, or we could call it a byproduct. But this is the reason why we exhale carbon dioxide. So we exhale it back to the atmosphere because we are continuously running this process again. We're gonna also get some water, but this right here is really what we're interested in. So remember that this does have a delta G overall that is going to be negative, and whenever you have that, energy is released. And so since energy is released, that is why we're seeing this on the product side of the equation. So that energy would then be available for a number of different things inside of the cell, and primarily what we're gonna see it used for in this case is we're gonna use it to actually make ATP. So that ATP, that valuable short-term energy storage molecule, that is what we're really looking for when we run cellular respiration. Now, that overall process of cellular respiration can be broken down into three distinct phases. And so if we list those phases here, the first one is going to be what we call glycolysis. The second one has a number of different names, but we're gonna to refer to it as the citric acid cycle. And then the third one has the longest name of all, and that's gonna be oxidative phosphorylation. Now, each one of these processes will serve a specific role in cellular respiration. And if we just talk about overall kind of jobs in all of this, um, these first two, kind of the main focus of those is going to be to oxidize the organic molecule. And so that organic molecule, remember that we are starting with glucose, but if we were starting with something else, we would be oxidizing that as well. And so another way to refer to that oxidation process would be to say that we are um, collecting the electrons. And remember that the electrons, they do hold potential energy. So we're really collecting or harvesting the potential energy from the organic food molecule. Now the third stage, this is the one where we are going to extract, or you could say release the energy. And by energy, we're talking about the potential energy from the collected electrons. 
right? So the first two stages, their job is primarily devoted to collecting the electrons, which we could also say is oxidizing the organic molecule. And then the third stage is going to be really focused on extracting or releasing the energy from those collected electrons. Now, when we do that, we are going to pass the electrons ultimately to oxygen gas, which is O2. And that really is why oxygen is required in this overall process. So do note that the oxygen is gonna be involved at the very end of this whole process.